So with Cloud3 worthy for programming, well, let me tell you my experience. I've been using Cloud3 Opus for the past two days or so, and so far my experience has been really good. Now I've been using GPT-4 for like the past five months every day, so I would say I'm a good candidate to compare it with Cloud3 Opus. I'm not going to run any benchmarks or do any type of analysis. I'm just basing it off my experience and how it has worked for me for the past past couple days. So I'm using this model through their official application, which is cloud.ai. Now you have to pay 20 bucks to get access to the Opus model, but it is way cheaper than using the API directly, which is the reason why I'm ultimately using it via this interface. So now let's take a look at this first example. Here I'm asking it to refactor some TypeScript code to instead of throwing errors, use a discriminated union instead. So here I say, let's change this. So it returns a discriminated union with success success true, success false. If it is success, then success true, and then file to get URI string. And if it's not success, return the error, which is a string. And then I passed in the code. Let's ignore the lack of formatting. And now let's take a look at its answer. Here is the modified code that returns a discriminated union with success true or success false and the corresponding file to get URI or error message. And then as we can see, it extracted these two type aliases for the union and it correctly specified the discriminator, which is the success property. And then it performed the actual union upon result and then uses that to specify the return type to be a promise of result. So, so far, this is great. This is what I would do and well, pretty much anyone. Now, if I keep scrolling down, as we can see, it is using the discriminated union. So success true, and then it passes the property. In the case of false, then it passes the error. And if I keep scrolling down, same with this one, same with this one, same here. And then finally within this catch block. And if I scroll down, it gives us the step-by-step -step of the changes it did. So it creates the success result, the error result, and then the result. And then it tells you that it changed the return type of the function. And then instead of returning undefined, the function now returns an error result. So this is great. Well, as we can see, it is using the union everywhere. And then here for the case where it is valid. And this way, the color of the function can handle the result based on the success property and access either the file to get URI or the error message accordingly. Now let's compare it to GPT-4. Now here I'm using the API, which is actually via cursor.sh, which is a fork of VS Code, which simply integrates GPT within the IDE. So this is obviously better than using, say, the official chat GPT, since you're using the API directly. So there are less restrictions. So the same prompt, and as we can see, it didn't separate them into different type aliases. It is all within one. So bonus points to Cloud3. And the reason is because this is not really readable. For example, what if the discriminator switches upon more than just two states, then it becomes a huge mess. And likewise with the number of properties. What if you have more properties? Plus, at a glance, it is not really telling you what is the success and what is the false. Sure, you can check and see, okay, success is true, so we get access to this one, else we get access to the error. But with the other approach suggested by Cloud, as we can see, all we need to do is look at this type alias and we immediately know what corresponds to what. So that's why I would give a bonus point to Cloud. Now I'm not saying GPT-4 is in the wrong since it works, but I would prefer the other approach by Cloud. Now let's see if it is being used correctly. So return success true, then success false, then false here, false here, true here. And oh no, we have a throw error. Consider handling this more gracefully. Now, if we compare this to Cloud, as we can see, it is returning. So we'd replace the error we were throwing. So again, bonus points to Cloud3. The reason why we're using discriminated unions in the first place is to avoid throwing errors. That's the whole point. And GPT outright skipped that logic here. So it really doesn't make sense. So yes, Cloud answer is way better. And that's pretty much it for this example. Now let's move on to the second section just to make sure that it retains memory, so context. So here we say, perfect, that function is going to be consumed in this one. So I changed the name to download or get a file from get a file or download. How about we refactor this hook? And we do. And then we have, first of all, rename it. 
Second of all, do not misuse use effect. So I gave it some extra parameters and then three, get rid of the get local file function since it is redundant and download file already encompasses that logic. And four, use TypeScript. So this is a test case to see if it can do these three suggestions. So if it keeps the context of the prompt and also if it can convert JavaScript to use TypeScript annotations. So here I passed in the file, which is pretty short. It doesn't have a lot of logic, as you can see. And as we can see, we have here's the refactored hook and component using TypeScript. So it uses the arguments and then the result. Now, here's one mistake. It is not being consistent with the type names. So as we can see, this is use file item and use file item result, which does not correspond one to one with the name of this function. So this should be use downloadable file result and the same with arguments. But okay, you can easily refactor that. So let's not be that pedantic. And then here it defines everything. It uses the result property. So result.success else this, and then it refactored the other code and converted it to TypeScript. So it is using the props. So as we can see, this is nice. It is using the same name and it added the props postfix. And then it uses, consumes the hook which is the one that it just refactored. And then it has all of this logic and that's pretty much it. And then it has all of the things that it has done. So one, the hook has been renamed from this to this. Two, instead of use effect, the download file function is now invoked imperatively when needed. It is defined using use callback to memoize the function and avoid unnecessary recreations. So this is quite important because as we can see, it is now also thinking about performance. Then the get local file function has been removed since its logic is already encompassed. The code has been converted to TypeScript. The download file function now uses the download or get file function. And then the message prop in use downloadable file is now optional, indicated by the question mark in message. So now, in my opinion, it did accomplish the task. I told it to do these four refactorings. It wasn't that much and it successfully gathered the hook that we were using. And it also took this file that I passed in here and it changed it from JavaScript to TypeScript successfully. So now let's keep scrolling down. So here we have, how about we add an open file method to the use downloadable file and they pass in all of the code. So you pass in the open file function that I wrote and then I pass in the refactored code. So for the use downloadable file hook, and then here, as we can see, it added it here. So use callback and notice how it is keeping the react dot use callback. So here before that, we hadn't used any react hook only for this case, like the use state. So it kept that convention. But once I showed it this file that uses react, so the object, instead of destructuring the properties and the methods, well, it cut on that. And as we can see, it maintains the exact same convention. So as far as keeping the code uniform and using the conventions and whatnot, that's great for Cloud. Then I passed in another file. I told it to change it from this weird mapping factory component to an actual factory component with a switch statement. And as we can see, it uses the switch file type. And now here's the interesting part. Notice how here there are no types. So this is all in JavaScript. But if I scroll down, it added this type alias file item props and then file file metadata and it imported that from this repository as same as this message item. So we maintained the context for when I showed it this information. So we gathered, hey, we're using the file metadata and we're using the message type. And so it is now consuming it correctly in this type alias, which is absolutely great. So as far as context goes, it seems to be doing just fine. Obviously, this is a short conversation. We would have to see how it does with maybe 20 messages. But for the amount of information here, I would say it does a really good job. Now I have another test case here. 
and this is mostly to see how cloud approaches a problem. Now the previous one was mostly refactoring and going back and forth, but in this one, I'm going to tell it to try to come up with a better solution. So I passed in this code and then I told it, as you can see, I have not refactored the use effect yet. Now in React, you should use use effect sparingly since it is not meant to be a signal watcher, but rather a way to synchronize your app state with external state. However, since we have full control of the state in this case, it is a terrible practice to use a use effect here. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the behavior of this component is exactly, but by the looks of it, if there is no source, that means that the file isn't downloaded on the user's device. So what it effectively does is, if it's not downloaded, download it right away, or so it seems. This is the hook, and then I passed it all of the code, and then this is the download or get file.ts. And then what do you suggest we do in this case? Maybe pass an argument to the use downloadable file, like download unload boolean or something of the like. Maybe you can come up with a better name that signifies its exact behavior and make sure that it only downloads it if it doesn't exist in the user's device. And then, as we can see, first update the use downloadable file hook to accept a new argument. Let's call it auto download. So it did come up with a good name and then it used a use effect. Well, I told it that it is an anti-pattern and you shouldn't use a use effect for this. So one last point to Cloud3. Now let's compare it to GPT-4. So I passed in the exact same prompt and we got this answer. So I suggest naming the parameter something descriptive like auto download if missing. Now I prefer this name over Cloud's name, which is auto download. And the reason is because it does tell you exactly the behavior of this property. So as for naming conventions, bonus points to GPT-4 in this case. And then it gave us the code, but again, it is using a use effect. And well, the solution is pretty much the same. If I come down here, it is invoking the download file function, which we already defined here where we have download file. So as we can see, GPT-4 repeats itself. Cloud simply used and referenced this function instead, instead of basically copying this logic and pasting it here. So bonus points to Cloud. Even though Cloud got the naming convention wrong, it wrote cleaner code in this case. Now, another thing we can notice right off the bat is that GPT-4 gave us the whole code. Meanwhile, Cloud just gave us the relevant parts. So in my opinion, in this particular case, Cloud wins. And the reason is because why do we need to see the whole code? I just need to see what the changes are. In this case, just the arguments, then here, which makes sense since it is using args, and then here for the use effect. Meanwhile, GPT-4 went ahead and wrote everything from the very beginning. So it is slower. Cloud gave us the answer faster because, well, it omitted all of this unnecessary code repetition. So bonus points to Cloud, but obviously in some cases it is better for it to write the whole code. Since it already exists, Cloud did a better job. If the code didn't exist, then obviously we need the whole code. Now as for the second part, updated usage in image file component. And here, as we can see, use downloadable file and passed it as true, which is basically the same as Cloud did here. So nothing new, but again, notice how Cloud gave us the relevant part. It gave us the component, which was the only thing in the code affected by the changes. Meanwhile, GPT-4 went ahead and again, typed everything out from the beginning. So Cloud is still faster while preserving the relevant parts from the prompt. Now I told it, I like it, but again, I'm not a fan of the use effect. So here we tried changing it up and instead did it within the flow of the hook. So with auto download and not source, then download file. And again, I'm not a fan of this approach. Why? Because, well, every time the state changes or the consumer changes, it is going to pretty much rerun this logic. Sure, if there's a source, then this wouldn't result in like an infinite loop, but it's better to be safe. So now I did the same test with GPT-4 and then it said modified use downloadable hook without use effect. And as we can see, there is no use effect, but there is no logic for downloading the file if it doesn't exist in the device. But if I come here to the second part, it moved the logic down to the image file. So this is worse than Cloud. 
at least Clark kept it within this context of the hook and not within the context of this function, which is better again because we're passing a parameter to the hook, which was auto download if it doesn't exist. And as we can see, just got rid of it altogether. So even though both got the implementation details wrong, Claude's answer is way better. Just for the fact that it tried giving another solution within the hook and not moving it outside, which doesn't make sense since I never asked for that since the beginning. So now we continue with the conversation. So notice how we have this piece of logic. I passed in the download or get a file function, which is the one with the actual logic. And then here in use downloadable file, which was the hook we were just talking about. And then I said the source would be set to the URI of the stored file if it exists, right? So effectively with the current logic, since source is initialized to null at first, it would always download the file. And then I told it, I guess this state should be initialized with the data we get from the file system to make sure it exists, if that makes sense. And if it doesn't, then run download file. So no need to have this dangling if statement within the hook that would go in the initializer. So I had to give Claude some hints telling it, hey, we should be using this within the initializer. And then I also told it about the behavior we want, which is it should auto download the file if it doesn't exist in the user's device. And then it said, you're right, the current logic initializes source to null, which means it will always trigger the file download, even if the file already exists on the user's device. To fix this, we can modify the use downloadable file hook to check if the file exists on the user's device before initializing the source state. If the file exists, we can set the source to the file's URI. Otherwise, we can set it to null and trigger the download if auto download is true. And as we can see, it uses this use effect, an asynchronous function, and it pretty much copied over the logic from the function I passed it. So from this one. And so, now, at the very least, the hook has the behavior we want. So then I pass the prompt to GPT-4 to see if it now works. And as we can see, it told us, yes, we're going to change this to the hook, but notice how there is no auto download in the arguments. So we just skip that altogether. And then here it has a function, check file exists, and then it does all of the check. And then I use effect that executes this function whenever check file exists, but it's within a use callback, so it doesn't matter. We're not going to run into an infinite loop. But then notice how it performed another change. Only attempt to download if source is not already set. And this is not the desired behavior. And why? Because what if the user wants to re-download the file for whatever reason? Then this is going to prevent them from doing so. Without this check, the device is going to ask the user, you already have the file, are you sure you want to download it again? That's up to the user at that point. So GPT-4 produced another side effect that was not intended. So as we can see from the code from Cloud, this is way better. He didn't output any side effect, as we can see unchanged, and this is pretty much the same. All it did was create this use effect, and as we can see, it is using the auto download argument. So if it exists, then set the source to the URI, else if auto download, and then it triggers the download file function, which again is not being done here. It is just checking if it exists, and that's pretty much it. It is not downloading it because again, it got rid of the auto download argument altogether. Now I did write more messages with Cloud to refactor the code, to create a reusable function for this, to make the code cleaner and whatnot. But with this, we can get the gist of it. Now with the final verdict, what is my conclusion based off my usage on these two last days with Cloud and basically five months or so with GPT-4. Now, personally, I would say Cloud is better than GPT-4 for code. I have to use it more. I guess it's too soon to say that yet. Only time will tell, but from what I've done with Cloud compared to GPT-4, I'm definitely going to be using Cloud more. However, GPT-4 has some things that are better than Cloud and they can complement each other really well. For example, the naming convention that was done better by GPT-4. Sure, it is something quite insignificant, at least when it comes to writing code that actually works, but hey, 
You never know, maybe GPT-4 might come up with a better solution. And so my recommendation to you is use both if you can. I'm still going to be using Cloud and GPT-4 together. And since GPT-4 is more adopted compared to Cloud, for example, this ID does not support Cloud, then I'm going to use GPT-4 more in that sense. But that doesn't mean I will abandon Cloud. It's the contrary. I guess I'm going to be using GPT-4 more for mundane tasks, maybe writing some boilerplate and whatnot, since again, it is already integrated within the ID, but for code that is more complex or requires refactoring or something of the like, I'll be using Cloud. Although, do let me know what your experience has been so far. What are you going to be using, GPT-4 or Cloud? Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.